In today's gospel, Peter receives the keys, the keys of authority, the keys of authority for the church for all time. But we need to ask ourselves, is there something more going on at the same time? In many ways, this is like a television serial which has been going on for years. And there are earlier episodes we may not have been paying attention to or might have missed. So it is with the first reading. The reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah, where Eliakim is given the key of the house of David. When he opens, no one shall shut. When he shuts, no one shall open. And this reading from Isaiah would have been known to the disciples so that when Jesus was speaking to Peter about the keys and about what will be bound and what will be loosed, they would have remembered this earlier story. But most of us aren't particularly familiar with the episode with Shebna and Eliakim, so I'd like to tell you a little bit about it. There's a period of time in Israel's history when their enemies without, there were alliances and confederacies, and the country was threatened. And the country's leaders came to a point where they needed to make a decision to trust the will of God or to rely on the will of man. If they were to trust the will of God and listen to Isaiah, they would simply have to wait and see how God would provide for the security of their country and their people. But they wanted security, and they loved authority, and they loved power. And so they ignored the prophets. They trusted the will of man. The enemy of their enemy became their friend, and the country itself was placed at great risk. And as a result, Shebna, master of the palace, who trusted in the will of man and did not trust in the will of God, was replaced in a position of authority. And so it is today that Peter replaces others in the position of authority. But we have to ask ourselves, from whom? Whom does he gain authority and why? Well, previously, God placed religious leaders in charge of taking care of the people of Israel, the scribes and the Pharisees. And it's from them that the authority is taken and granted to Peter. And to know more about this, we only need to continue a little further in the Gospel of Matthew. Matthew 23, verse 13. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees! You lock the kingdom of heaven before men. You do not enter yourselves, nor do you allow entrance to those trying to enter. And thus the theme of the keys comes to us again. For you see, the religious leaders were locking the people away from God. They were in charge of the laws, and as opposed to using the laws as they were intended, so as to allow people to conform their lives to God and to grow closer to God and to know God better. They used the laws as a tool so that they could maintain authority by reminding people of their failings and reminding people of the authority the religious leaders had over them. This was not the authority, the way Jesus understood it. And as a result, he takes authority from these religious leaders and grants them to Peter. And why? Because when Jesus asked the question, who am I, Peter is willing to open his heart and listen to the word of God, that this is the Son of God. And these are not words that he would have himself. God himself gave them to Peter, but Peter's heart had to be open to the will of God to hear them. Still further, why was the authority taken away from them, the scribes and the Pharisees? Again. Later in Matthew 23, verse 23, you pay tithes and have neglected the weightier things of the law, judgment and mercy and fidelity. 
but these you should have done without neglecting the others. Indeed, they emphasized all the wrong things. The law is good. The law is to guide us. The law is to bring us into conformity with God so that we can one day enjoy a presence in heaven and grow as close to God as possible. And instead, they used the laws as a wall, a wall to block people. Mercy. Mercy is one of the things that they need to exercise, as well as good judgment. And instead, they hold people bound. The laws are to help us and liberate us. And they're using it to imprison people. So it comes to the will of God and the will of man. And Peter is here to assist us, to unlock heaven, to allow us to be united with God. There are two keys that are shown with Peter in all the images, one of which shows authority and the other forgiveness. And it's the forgiveness of the things that we have done wrong that allows us to go forward and grow closer to God. What parent or boss would hold a failing over their charge over and over again just for authority's sake and beat them down? It is not the will of God. The will of God is to be reunited with God and to forgive. And that is why in the Our Father, we are to forgive others their sins so that we too may be forgiven. Now you might think to yourself, well this is all nice and simple. I'm not a pope. I'm not the president. What authority do I have? Those guys are stuck. Ah, but not so quick. We too have authority. Be that authority in our families, authority with our friends, authority at work. But even more than that, as Christians we have authority. By virtue of our baptism and our confirmation, we too have been granted a small part of the authority granted to Peter. And so we must ask ourselves, are we going to be a wall or a gate? For you see, the Pharisees and the scribes had taken the law and the will of man, they puffed themselves up, and they became a wall that separated God from people, and that is not the will of God. The will of God is that God and man should be united. Do we exercise the mercy? Do we exercise forgiveness? Are we the gate that allows others to be united to God and to grow closer and to one day enjoy heaven? Now the law stands, there is right, there is wrong, and we do not shy away from it. We do not bend the law just so that people can be closer to God. But we need to be able to forgive and to exercise mercy so that they can move forward and grow closer to God even as they fail. And so we return to the central question. It was a question for Shebna, for Eliakim, for Peter, and now for each of us, for the authority granted to us. Do we wish to be a wall or do we wish to be a gate through which others can find God?